Welcome to Classic Burgers. Today we will bring you Northeast LA's 125 from the Coke Crew, also known as the Downtown LA King. So hop on board and don't miss the boat. Welcome to Classic Burger. I'm sitting right here with Nella's 125. And just a little context for you, when I say Nella, what I mean is Northeast LA. You see, in the Los Angeles Chicano culture, uh, guy, we made barrios, we designated our neighborhoods, and we tend to have like a mental map. And that's how we talk to each other. We say, you know, like, so-and-so lives over there by, we'll use the, the barrio name. So, for example, if I'm saying like uh, 125 stays over there in Nela, over by the avenues, which is like the neighborhood, the barrio that's over there. Or I might say like Bruin stays over there by like the Florencia neighborhood, you know. You know, and, and, and it'll be according to like the gang neighborhood that's around there. That's just how we do it on the streets, you know. And so when, but when we're talking about, that's like specific neighborhoods. But when we're talking about bigger areas, we'll describe it as like Nela. It means like all Highland Park, you know, Cypress Park, Atwater, and all that kind of stuff. You know, like those, that Pasadena, Eagle Rock, that's Nela. Mm -hmm. and that's the area he's from. Um, there's SGV, you know, it has a bunch of, you know, we call it the SGV, San Gabriel Valley, SFV, you know, so on and so forth. Sela, Southeast LA, Saulos, South Los Angeles Harbor Area, HA Harbor Area. So we have our little designations. And so Nela, when we say that, we're just describing that, you know, 125 has no G, especially, and that's the area he comes out of. So will you please um, let our audience know, uh, we want to start out with, how, uh, your area, the history behind the graffiti, what you first saw, how you got into it, how you learned about it. Um, I'm going to say 1982. I was a popper before I was a writer. Okay. Okay. I used to kick it with Snap, Crackle, and Pop mm -hmm. and Gangsters of a Groove. This is 1982. Uh, Toy Boy, Heckle and Jekyll, Playboy Eddie, uh, et cetera. It was not till 1983 that I got into really, really, really graffiti. And I got down with some crew called DMC. On uh, those days, uh, I didn't have a name. I didn't have a name till 1983. Uh, so who it, were some of the members of DMC? Uh, it was Xerox, Even, Omi, Dare2. Those people, they're, they're, they was were. Was Zoom from it? Zoom was from TDK. Okay. Zoom was on the other side. Zoom was on, on the Eagle Rock side, which was, was Stretch, Flair, Playboy Eddie, Top 37, Zoom, and Flair. Who did the piece on San Fernando Road that said DMC? And it was real colorful, right yeah, off the That was somewhere. even. That okay. was even that did that. Okay. Even in Omi. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for letting me know. I always yeah. wondered about Yeah. That was a fresh piece. And they also they also did it behind Toledo's Way uh, Elementary School. They did a Raiders right there, but you oh. couldn't see it because it was in the residential area mm -hmm. on Lincoln on Lincoln Avenue, where which was we used to hang out at Birch Liquor, which was on Avenue Forty Nine in York, right next to a Sparklets. So we used to kick it right up the street, right there. Got you. All right, so now this young one twenty five, you're now running with DMC. You still mm -hmm. don't got a name yet. What happens next? So what happens next is that I met my good friend Daniel Ramos in the seventh grade at Burbank Junior High. Um, and those days, everybody had a name like Tic Tac, the Robot Twins, uh, Dr. Vibration, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, me there too. So one day, my, uh, my homeboy Frosty told me, hey, we need to think of a name of you, for you. So... I was like, I, I didn't think of a name about me. I wasn't really serious about having a name at that time. So he told me, uh, how much do you weigh? And I go, uh, I weigh 125 pounds. At that time, I always been a chubby kid. So he started calling me 125. Ooh. And that name stuck to me ever since that year. 1983. After that, um, I involved with 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 a lot of a lot of other writers in Highland Park. In 1985, the the 
the crew that I really was really, really serious about other than DMC was Kids Never Surrender, KNS, 1985. Yeah, they was were really a, up. They were a bus crew. Mm -hmm. It was Rescue, Clyde, OZ, Crazy, Acid, Weiner, Even. And they um, were kind of like with TAC. As exactly. Well, right? okay, yeah, yeah, with Fly and Dester and, yeah. and, and, you know, and Dark those, and, dark and, 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 and my homeboy Ask. And uh, uh, Rare and Regal were from TAC too. Mm -hmm. but all good writers. All, all, good, they were all good writers. Good at tagging and up a lot. And up a lot on the buses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then uh, let's transition to the next phase. So now, um, when did you come into the buses? The buses, I came into like 1985. Okay. 1985. Yeah. I, would say, I would say 1985. We started catching grills and driver sides and billboards, and we used to kick it right there on, on, on Strickland and Figueroa when we used to get outsides right there. You know, there used to be a liquor store called Jack's Liquor right next to the Optimus home. And we used to kick it right there. You know, I kick it with my homeboy Warren and my homeboy Drake and my homeboy Kilroy and Dennis, which was from k &S. Kids Never Surrender at that time. And so where in the um, in that area, in Nela, were the pieces at? Where did they start piecing? What were some of the yards? Well, what, what really happened over there, there was pieces everywhere. Because, like, in Negro Rock, there was pieces behind the 7-Eleven where the TDKs did it. But mostly, the good pieces were right there in the Alley River bed, right there by Montecito Park, where you go right inside, inside. Well, it's it's... Kind of like Highland Park, Cypress Park area right there. Um, and there was a lot of pieces right there. But a lot of liquor stores were like that. I remember Zuski and Quest from the Dream Team had pieces everywhere down York Boulevard, like McGibbon's Auto Shop right there next to the car wash. You know, Zuski and Quest were two dudes from a crew called the Dream Team. And they were really known in 1984 and 1985 on York Boulevard and by Dog Dog Projects. And how about the Pasadena scene? They had a strong scene. Oh, yeah. How they, did you guys, did you guys ever intermingle? Yeah, with I, I, I actually, I met, I met two famous guys from Pasadena called PTA, Pasadena Top Artists, Tizer and Cyrus. Code, no, Ty, right? Tyrus and Cyrus, I met them at, at some little, at some little, little club called Maryland's Backstreet. It was like a little club where, you know, youngsters used to go there and we used to go pop and break and we go there. And so one day I was riding in the, I was riding in the, in, in the back. It used to be a, a hamburger hamlet next door to the, next door to the Maryland's back street. We used to drink 40s right there and everything. And I ran into those guys and I couldn't believe I met those guys because those guys were like really up in Pasadena. Cool. Now. Back in the days, I was I would go sometimes through those areas and take pics of, of pieces and stuff. Mm -hmm. There was um, some good relic stuff, mm -hmm. a lot of Playboy Eddie stuff mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like he had, it's like he had a uh, all the avenues on lock, like on the legal walls. He would do mm -hmm. like little murals and stuff, and I would see him out there hustling. I'd always run into him. Um, as a matter of fact, just about every time I went to the avenues area, uh, he would pop out of somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so he was like a figure around there. Yeah. Tell me about Playboy Eddie. Uh, Playboy Eddie was a, a, a really famous guy in Highland Park. He had a lot of juice with Highland Park, the gang, and Avenues. And he was really, he was, he was from a crew called USF, United Street Force. Right. And he was a great popper. I mean, when he was young, man, that guy yeah. was a pop. He's, I remember. Yeah. He was, he was, he was bad. He was bad. Get Up Stickers is the ultimate bombing sticker. Made from military grade materials, these stickers are super easy to peel and were made for putting on tanks. So you know they're going to last. So click on the link below to submit your designs. You don't want to sleep on this. Ploy Bill Eddie was everywhere in in the scene, in the popping scene, in the graffiti scene. And somehow, somewhere, he always did have all the liquor stores, all the all the supermarkets in, in, in that area. Oh, yeah. Now, during those times, I went by the riverbed that was there in the avenues that you mm -hmm. can see right off the freeway. Mm -hmm. And there was a big block that said Frosty. Frosty. So tell me about Frosty. Uh, Frosty, uh, 
Frosty, me, me and Fro I met Saw Frosty like in the seventh grade, and uh, when he died in 1987 behind him, a grill of the bus, he fell on the back of the bus and hemorrhage got a he head hemorrhage and died. So, you know, uh, uh, relic, uh, relic and repo mm -hmm. did that Frosty. It's silver with the plum background, right? Yeah, you know, with the lightning bolts going in the middle. It was yeah. man, Frost. It, it was relic and and repo. Man, amazing work. Amazing yeah, work. And Repo was, was from K and S. Mm -hmm. Relic wasn't. Relic was from K two S. S T N. But isn't that's one of those things where it just shows like the level of, of commitment and, and obsession kids had that I mean they would die over it. Yeah. You know? I mean over yeah. accidents because yeah. they were trying so hard. You know? <laughs> we used to ride grill from like Figueroa and York all the way to all the way to Avenue uh, Avenue forty nine, like twelve, thirteen, fifteen blocks. In the yeah. back of the grills. Yeah, I've done that quite a few I, times I, myself. I, I have too. All right, well, let's get a little bit of background. Just on you growing up, dude. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, growing up in Highland Park was, it was fun. I had a lot of fun. I had I, I grew up with a good family. Uh, but uh, it was in the sixth grade, I would say. And uh, I remember one day... Uh, I was flipping the channels. Back then, we had something called the Z Channel. I remember that. I remember the Z Channel yeah. with HBO in there. And so I put it on PBS, and I see this graffiti 1990. And it's the movie Wild Style. And I'm kind of like, wow. I just opened my eyes. I would see these subways all bombed up and everything. I'm in the sixth grade. I'm looking at it. And I'm going, man, that looks Man, that's bad, man. And not the pacing level got me excited. It was the bombing aspect that got me excited. That's what that that's what drives me today. It's not really the the legal stuff. Don't get me wrong. I admire everybody's legal stuff. That's amazing. But me, my what gets me pumping, my blood pumping. Is when I do illegal stuff. Well, yep, and that's what you're well known for. Yes. That's why you have that mask on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so why don't we talk about then now, okay, so I'm going to, for historical purposes, everyone knows that uh, you got labeled the downtown king because, yeah. like, uh, about I would say about 1989 is when you really started killing it systematically where you were up everywhere all over downtown L.A. So let's talk about what got you thinking what what was it about downtown LA that attracted you and why you got so into that um when I used to walk from the alley riverbed all the way to downtown I used to walk on it maybe three or four times a day uh, it was something about downtown that I loved so one day I was I was uh I was uh I was uh going down to Broadway and I seen how easy it was down there. Now, back in those days, a lot of people were scared of downtown. They were. They were. They were going to Hollywood or East L.A. Mm -hmm. They would stay away from downtown because it's so ruthless. I would see the paddy wagon. They used to have a paddy wagon down there, you oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? And everything. I used to go on Maine and go eat at those little fried chicken spots and stuff. Yeah. And I just seen how easy it was, and I started going down there. But in the early 80s, in the alley street scene, and if anybody knows about the alley street scene, oh. back in the early, early 80s, I kind of, like, figured out how 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 to get my way around from, from point A to point B. Because you have to know, downtown is like a box. It went from Washington all the way up to, 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 uh, to, to Figueroa. Then you hit Chinatown, then you come back on the other side. You go North Broadway, South Broadway. And that was it. But remember, back then, downtown was more open. Now you see downtown were more buildings. And downtown wasn't called downtown. Downtown was called the metropolitan area. And I did a lot of research in downtown. So me personally, I made that label up, the downtown king. Yeah, I mean, but that, I think everybody kind of agrees. Like, we all know, you know, that, that you know, so when you say that, uh, it's not that, you know, it's fake. 
is yeah. what you're saying. Like, yeah. you I, really had a lot of tags everywhere. In I put a, I put a, I put a lot of years in town, downtown before I got into trains, and uh, uh, I loved it down there. But then I started seeing the structure move as soon as Hillary Clinton and 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 Bill Clinton gave give this like little incentive to downtown. Everything changed. I started getting all hipped out. It wasn't the same. You have all these little gummy bear bicycle cops just buffing shit out and helping out the police. It, it was just it downtown wasn't cha- it, downtown wasn't what it used to be. Hmm. It, and then what about um, in downtown LA? Um, a lot of the stuff that, like for example, there was arcades where gangs would hang around. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of little cutty stuff that was going around. There, the Fifteen Hills, that old mm-hmm. thing that was there. Uh, did you run into any, when you were out there, run into any problems like with that? Or tell us some I adventures really, I really in downtown. Didn't, I really didn't. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm known for something else that I really don't talk about. I'm a hustler. That's what I do. Uh, people that know me uh, always get like, hey, one, two, you got, you got supplies for sale. You got this for sale. You got this. For... So I was always the guy that they came to me, hey, you got this. So I was really good with those people, with, with the, the 18s and 15 Hill, because there was three arcades on Broadway. Yeah. Right? There was one on, on, on 7th and Broadway where yeah. the, 18th, yeah. uh, the 18s hang out. Right. There was another one on, on, on between 4th and 5th, and there was another one on 3rd and 2nd. Right. None, you know, none of none of those none of those arcades are around except for the, for the one on uh, the one on seventh between seventh and eighth on Broadway. It's still there. It's still there. Yeah, but, but 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 eighteen don't hang out because they got a they got a they got a gang injunction right there. They can't even they can't even hang out right there. Mm. And I knew all those guys. I knew all those guys. Okay. And uh, I've never how about a, with, how about with like crackheads or homeless guys? Oh yeah. Try to get crazy with you. Uh, I had a couple of a couple of episodes, a couple of episodes, a couple of episodes with them, but nothing major, nothing like I I got stabbed or I got whooped on or, or, it was more like a personal per, personal beef that I used to have. No, okay. you know what I'm saying. But, um, I kind of stayed low, and I heard so many stories. Back in those days, that oh yeah, one twenty five is a bum, and he carries a shopping cart and aluminum cans in the like little cart, and, and I heard so many stories about that little, that little, that little era, that, that little era where I just, I just like, I just like, I, just, I would laugh because I was just like this clean cut kid that would be like down there, and I would just watch how, like, yeah, how I used yeah, to do things. Moved, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, um. Never had no problems with, with no crackheads or no gangsters down there. Okay. Well, but now that we're on the subject of problems, uh, there was an article we did in SP Magazine because mm-hmm. you were known in the maybe mid to later 80s a little bit as a dude who was like kind of going over people and kind of beefing, capping a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so we put you in the Capping Fiends article. Mm-hmm. I'll post a little snippet up to here so the, the audience knows what we're talking about because uh, that was based on... Um, we used to use the word capping because Cap was famous um, from Style Wars on going over people and stuff like that. And that, he had that bombing mentality of just doing quick throw-ups, but he was d- willing to just go over anything and anybody, right? And so when, when we knew about that, our word, we like some of us in the old school would say, hey, oh, they capped over him, or, or he's going out capping people, or we're going to go cap these dudes. It was just like a, it became a slang word. So that's why I used it in that article. So tell me a little bit. What was your thinking at that time? And and you know, and tell tell us something about the capping era. You um, know? I had I had I had similar beef with certain crews out there. Um, that went over me because they thought it was cool to go over me. Mm. There's other people that that thought that they just can just go over me for no reason, and I went back and back over them. And uh, I just didn't take no. When I was young, I wouldn't take. Uh, I wouldn't take. I would. I wouldn't take. I, I would take disrespect uh, a whole different in, in a whole different way. Yeah, which so, is unacceptable. Uh, to you. Unacceptable to me. If you're gonna cap me, dude, I'm gonna cap you back. Mm-hmm. 
I don't care who you are. Yeah. You know a little about them. You know, you know what we're doing. <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and you know one thing about me that. Yeah. That so I'm for not, the viewers, we we had a little back and forth yeah, at yeah. that time. We, you know, there's people now, the cat people, mm -hmm. that they don't leave no name. No. The reason that they knew it was me is because I put my you name, put there. Your name there. And no matter who it was, yeah. I did it yeah. for for for. To let people know, hey, that's me that did. Yeah, yeah. They went over you. You, got, you so, gotta respect so, that. Man. So, so people, people that, people that, people, people that 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 went over me at that at that time. Um, there was no reason for them to go over me, but they went over me because they thought that they're from this better crew, or this guy was better than me, or. He knows how to throw freshest letters at me, or, or etc. Yeah, right. But, 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 it wasn't like it was told because once, once one dissed me in that crew, three or four other dudes in that crew started dissing yeah. me. Yeah. But luckily, I squashed all my beef. But it took years and years and years yeah. and years, and. Now that I think about it, 25, 30 years ago, if I can change everything back, I would have done it. But, you know, when you're young, you do things. Yeah, of course. You, you do things that, that, that... Well, that's part of the graffiti you, way. I mean, it, you know, and I think maybe, you know, hearing it from you now, it's like almost like you got a bad rap that you were doing it like because you liked it or because you were like, you know, because some people... They get a thrill off of destroying other people's stuff. Yeah. Or even just destruction. When they bomb, they do it for the sake of destruction, not really for the art form or the style or getting up. Uh, you know, so um, maybe you were getting a bad rap because of that. Well, I was getting a bad rap because a lot of people would, 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 would like, you know, back then we didn't have no social media. We yeah. didn't have nothing like that. You know, it was just like a word of mouth. You know what I mean? That it was, it was. Oh yeah, that guy's going over us. Oh yeah, this dude's going over us. Oh yeah, this dude we're looking for him, whatever. But when I ran into one, like one of those guys, you know, I would be like, "Hey, dude, what's up, man? What's cracking? I'm right here." And a lot of those guys that a lot of a lot of those guys that I had beef then mm. are my best friends now. All right, so let's let's move on though. What was real cool, and I have to respect this about you, Mister One Two Five. I re this is what I like, is that you went through years of that kind of like struggle of like getting up, but then also having problems with people, whatever. You finally just said, you know what, screw it, and it, it's like you got into once you caught into freights, it's like you became like a freight king. You could say just killing it, dude, just doing piece after piece after piece after piece after piece. Peace. Mm -hmm. Bro, when I scroll through your Instagram before this interview just to kind of freshen up on mm -hmm. what you've been doing, bro, it's like nonstop. It's just like... <laughs> and, and you've been doing this for years. Yeah. So tell me about what about freight trains captivated you so much, bro? Well, like I told you, when that little era went down with uh, Bill Clinton and that thing, and I seen downtown change a lot. Mm-hmm. So I was so busy in the city, going all city. And when I say all city, that means buses, etc. Mm -hmm. So in 1996, my good friend Saul, that's known for freight, he started in 93 hitting trains. But I was too busy in the city. Yeah. Yeah, I was going with Panic. I was going with, with Chrome and Rock. And I was, I was going with Sacred and Euler and all these famous mm -hmm. cats that, man, all my good good friends back then. So one day Saul goes, let's go hit some freights. And I'm like, freights? I would go to the Lala Riverbed before it was all gated up. I go in there and I just tag him. I, I wasn't even really serious about trains. So he took me one time to the Ferguson Yard. The Ferguson Yard's in Commerce. And we went in there and I did my first train and I just fell in love with trains, man. Just fell in love. What yeah. is it about the trains? It just... First of all, they travel from state to state. So somebody might see you up, maybe you might hit the train here and it might go all the way to New York. 
It might go all the way to Miami. It might go to Oregon. It might go to Wisconsin. It might go all the way down to Texas. It was something about steel that I loved. You know, when you paint steel, it bounces right back. It don't it don't rise like a like a wall. It just boom boom. It hits you yeah, like a. It's tennis. got no tooth. It's you, got nothing you, to really grab onto. No. It's slick, so, so you have to really so be skillful. So the moniker, the the tagging, the moniker tagging, the 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 involvement with the paint. I'm an aerosol fiend. I don't do no latex. I don't do no rollers. That spray paint is my thing. I don't. I used to tell people, <laughs> I used to play around with people and say, <laughs> late takes don't count. I, I, I have said it to several of my friends. I, because aerosol is the format of real graffiti. Sure, latex looks good. And I know, I know my fr couple of my friends, they do latex and it looks outstanding. With a roller and doing this. So I started doing freights and Saul got me to freights and then kind of Saul kind of like kind of slowed down. He had a kid and he had to go, he had to do his thing. And I kept on going. I kept on going. I kept on going. You know, I kept on going. I kept on going. You know, a couple of people that I, that in my crew from Colt, like um, a lot of homies that, that I went and hit freights with. And uh, I got busted in uh, 2012, and my homeboy Stray and Two Face picked me up from Alley County, and I told them, you know what? I made this little thing that I think a uh, new concept that I that I think that's gonna go good on trains called Trains for Breakfast. <laughs> so now we have social media now. So every morning I would do like three or four trains. And it was called Trains for Breakfast. But then that, I started hitting a 1,000 trains a year. Wow. And the first year, it took me almost a year to do. But every other year, I got better at it. Like I would do like 25 panels a week. In four weeks, that's 100 panels a month. So I, this first year, I did... 12, the second year I did 11, the next year I did 10. No less than 10 because it's impossible. It's impossible to do a thousand trains less than 10 months. Unless you're doing like. Unless you're 30, getting paid like a 30, job. 30, to do it 30, all day. 30 panels, you know, 30 yeah. panels. And, you know, pain is not cheap when you're doing trains. Pain is not cheap. If you don't have a hustle, forget about it. But there's two. There's two kinds of graffiti writers that's right there's a graffiti writer and there's a graffiti bomber i'm not associated with the graffiti writer i'm associated with the graffiti bomber or like because a graffiti artist the right. artist yeah. yeah you know i consider myself a bomber i don't consider yeah. me consider myself like i'm not going to go on the weekend and go to a wall and spend a bunch of hours on it uh, an hours in it yeah. when i know i can go hit some trains and do it but you know what everybody has their own opinion about graffiti right. i respect that yeah i'm not i'm not taking nothing away from nobody but for me personally i'd rather hit a train than a wall right now that's just my perspective right um i'm not really i'm not i'm not really that that kind of cat that goes out and hangs out with people and do i go do my thing and you know and and, and and it's a wrap for the day and I go back the next day and then I go back the next day and I go back the next day and et cetera. But I love trains. That's one thing I do. I, I got into metal a uh, long time ago in 1996 when Sock took me my first train and I fell in love with it ever since. All righty, man. You know, and that's the thing. It seems like with freight trains, um, some people just get captivated by it. Bro. And and when they get into it, they get into it all the way. You know, I mean, I got my homeboy a Swab mm. from the Sluts Crew. Yeah. Um, these. Yes. Um, you know that really got all. I mean, that's that's their thing. Kick from MSK. That's like all he focuses on. Dudes like that King One Fifty Seven, right? He's like all going all, all out, right? All, top to bottom. All killers. All killers. All killers. All killers. And um, so hopefully we'll we'll get their take on it. You know, um, at, at some point. Um, 
so other than that, where do you see yourself now? Where do we see 125? Where, where's he going with it mm. in five years, in these next five years? You know what? Uh, you know, in, 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 we're talking about general life. Uh, I got taught from my dad. He died in he died of cancer in two thousand seven. He used to tell me. Sorry to hear that. Brother. Yes, my sir. condolences. Yes, sir. Uh, my dad used to tell me, "Don't worry about next year. Don't worry about two months from now. Worry about today. If you wake up tomorrow morning and God gives you the strength to open your eyes in the morning, it's another day to live. And that's how I live on graffiti right now. I don't know when I'm going to stop." I don't know if I ever ever gonna stop. Uh, nothing lasts forever, brother. Right. Nothing lasts forever. Amen. But it, but but you know what? Uh, I've been doing graffiti for over forty years, and on a uh, I would say my opinion on a consistent level, on a consistent level. That when I say consistent level, I say that I go out more like three or four times a week on a consistent level because I love to do it. And I love what, you know, one thing I love to do is always going by myself. Oh. Like I used to do back in the days, downtown, it's the same kind of format I use now. You know, if my homeboys tell me, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and turn. Oh, I got something going. My girlfriend's gonna pick me up. Okay, cool. I'm going with you or without you. Yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of cat I am. That's yeah. the kind of person I am. I'm that I'm that I'm that kind of person. I'm yeah. that, I'm like You're dedicated we, to like, what you do. Exactly. Exactly. But you know what? To each its own. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know? You might like sushi, I might like hamburgers. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 just it's the it's the way the the ball rolls. You know what I'm saying? Um Any words of advice for the the young bucks that may be watching this? Uh, or just you know any any observations man, that you would say that you need keep keep on doing your thing, keep on bombing, keep on representing Los Angeles, keep it on a consistent level, and always keep peace. So we have a special treat right here for our classic burners viewers. Um, we're actually gonna uh, have a fun uh, time just having one twenty five take us through the different tools of the trade, the, some of the the um the markers we used to use and valued and were hard to come by because these were we didn't have money back then and a lot of these we had to steal we had a rack that's what we call it and um we'd have to go to stationery stores sometimes far away because the stationery stores um that were local would get burned you know they got racked so much that they were you know they really they put them behind the counter they would lock them up they would be on you when they seen a kid come in with a backpack or a kid that looked like a writer uh they'd be all on them and stuff like that so eventually you know dudes had to travel to get these and eventually they they were just disappeared you know completely uh so 125 why don't you take us through a little um history lesson on these markers brother well my favorite markers as in the 80s was the shakeable Sakara. This marker is extinct now. If you do have one, save it. This is in a plastic wrap, never been used, still good. You can shake it and the liquid is still in there. Um, this marker was in five colors, purple and silver, black and silver, red and silver, green and silver. I used to love these because it, it does like a, a silver and it outlines, it bleeds with like a color, whatever yeah, color is yeah, on the outside. It used to look fabulous on a bus bench, on a oh, bus. Man, so yeah, these were the ones. Yeah. So that, the, the, that marker, that marker was my, 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 one of my favorite markers. My, one of my favorite, one, one. another favorite marker that I used to like was the mini white. Now this is the mini white right yeah, here. Yeah, that's a uh, the classic. The mini white back in those days used to cost six dollars. I even have the price on the back, six dollars, which was a very very good price for mini white. Uh, yeah, quality um, tool. The bad thing about this marker now, they sold the company, so whoever has the original mini whites. You should keep them because you're not gonna get a, you're not gonna get an original one ever again. This one is brand new, never been used. It's in my one of my collections. Um, 
this marker was so dope because it was the four finger is harder to use than the two finger the mini wide is easier smaller more impact um, but my favorite marker would have to be the good the old pilot. pilot pilot a lot of people ask me on my DMs what's that black marker that I use and it's not a mop it's not an American marker it's an original pilot the cheapest marker on the market you go get yourself a couple of bottles of pilot ink get you get you a pilot fill it up tape it up like this and you can catch maybe a hundred tags with a couple of bottles yeah that's always my go-to man my you favorite go, right there you, it, it, the other marker yeah tell yeah, us about this crazy looking this one. crazy one <laughs> this is a this is a marsh fountain 88 marker has a big brush on it um I used to fill it up with half marshing, half pilot. And uh, if you put if you put marsh ink only in this thing, marsh will fade in the sun. Yeah. If you put pilot half fifty, half marsh, um, you'll get you'll get a be better lasting tag with it. Um, they make them in two two kinds. They make them in that, and they make them in this, in this smaller marker. Yeah. They're both marsh markers. Those were originally designed for like signs, exactly, right? For stores yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But my other, my other favorite marker is the PX30 marker. Yes, yeah, so by uni, uni. Uni, right? Yeah. You know, um, this marker has been around since the '80s. I remember we used to go to Aaron Brothers. And rack a bunch of these, mm -hmm. and I mean a bunch of them. And I used to go to a little stationery called Coast Stationery on Spring Street between Fourth uh, and Fifth. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Some people, are, it's not there no more. Right. But if you're from the alley area and you're an old school writer, you know about that stationery. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Now back then, in '85 to '87, a mean streak used to cost a dollar fifty, which, 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 which. Which was a great buy, but I used to rack them. Um, like I used to grab, <laughs> grab boxes. Like I used to go to Zodis. I used to go to Fedco. Mm -hmm. I used to go to to certain stores that are not around. And I've got no problem telling you guys that because there's no Fedco. There's no Zodis. No. 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 So you're not gonna get them there. But there's other ways to get them. But that's that's the hustling way. All right, so uh, w any last words, any shout-outs you want to make right now? I just want to shout-out to all the old-school homies out there that I know. Uh, I want to shout-out to my crews, Colt, KNS, RTK, KNS. Shout-out, big shout-out to Skill and the whole production team that let me, let me, let me, what was possible for me to come here and, and, and do it on classic burners. And... Uh, Thank you again, sir. You got it, man. Appreciate you, my brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. And uh, for everyone out there, thank you for joining us. Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. This time is our most precious resource. Always remember that every minute, every second, every moment matters. So let's do our best to live a kind, compassionate, and loving life. And God willing, we'll see you in the next episode. Let's cancel the chatter off the grid, damage your scanner, shed some light in this tavern and hold this mic.
just like a lantern. I don't settle for the standard. Or nestle in the pasture, turn a happy camper into a snack for a pack of panthers. My arms would often reminisce on the mothership landing. And then become sad in it. How the brothers disbanded over money mismanaged.